What's going on, everybody? Tom Scavetta here of Preview and Preview with a very special guest, uh, one of our favorites recurring from the Brew Party podcast, Andy Hopper, our resident Chicago Bears fan. Andy, how are you? Busy day. Busy, busy day. Very busy day. I'm feeling great. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've been on uh, a review and preview show, so I always love coming on as a guest. I appreciate you having me on, and uh, love, love, love talking about the Bears. Love, love, love the moves that they have made so far, uh, not just today, but obviously with the trade as well. Uh, excited to dive into it with you, Tom. Absolutely, and before we get into that big news, quick friendly neighborhood reminder, if you're new, to the show make sure to check us out on all of our social media on instagram facebook twitter anchor youtube and tiktok um i believe andy's featured in our very first tiktok video as well um march man the season two congrats to your illini for making it i know un unrelated to this segment but uh, yeah they made it as a nine seed uh, they, they limped their way in <laughs> to the tournament Nine seed, really tough game against Arkansas. If you find a way to beat them, you're going to get Kansas in the second round. So it will not be easy uh, for Illinois. But it's March. Who knows? Anything could happen. I'm looking forward to losing my mind uh, watching them play. <laughs> uh, folks, if you don't know, Andy and I do a lot of scouting on the college football prospects every single year on From the Stand Sports. It's a college football show with us two and Brian McArdle. And we know, speaking of college prospects, Andy, your Chicago Bears had the number one overall pick, but they traded it to the Carolina Panthers for a wide receiver named DJ Moore and three, uh, I believe, four draft picks, the number nine overall pick. So it's a pick swap. So you go eight picks back. You get their third rounder this year, and then you get their first rounder next year, and then their second rounder in 2025. First off, was your act this trade and now that it's been maybe almost a week or so how do you digest it uh i mean <laughs> you feel really good about it so all throughout the off season i think like the big names that were involved or other teams i should say not really names where it was more so it's probably maybe the colts i think it's uh three or four um uh you heard stuff about like who who's who's three and who's four uh i believe four is the colts two is houston and then three yeah. can't think of three at the moment that i did not prepare for this segment but we know right. three uh yeah well, it shows you how prepared i am for it but anyway you saw houston you saw the colts those are really the big names i didn't really think about the panthers at nine. So uh, my kind of thoughts during the off season, were like, okay, let's move back to three or four. You can still, at that point, you will likely still have your pick. Well, not pick probably, but either Will Anderson Jr. or Carter will most likely be there or you hope, uh, and you can get that, ed that dominant edge rusher you desperately need. But you know, this news hits, uh, I think I was actually in Chicago, <laughs> With, uh, for my son's birthday uh, when this happened. So it was an even better day. So you get number nine overall this year, which there's, I'm going to throw this out at you. Devon Witherspoon, my Illini guy could be available right there. I'd love to see him uh, stay in orange and blue and go to the bears. But so you get nine, you get a third round pick again this year. Uh, I love that you have a first round pick next year because Carolina could stink again, like not be very good. And that mm -hmm. could turn into a very good pick. Uh, and then you stack another second round pick in 2025. And then you add, by the way, DJ Moore. This is a guy that's gone over a thousand yards uh, receiving. It was actually three straight years until this year. He just went, I think it was like 880, but he did have a career high seven touchdowns. He gives Chicago that legit number one receiver threat that if you watched any Bears football this past season, you it's very obvious that they were lacking. Um, and it's it was honestly, for me, probably the biggest need that uh, needed to be a, a, a addressed. And it was a question of, okay, if you're going to, you're going to do this in the draft or we're going to throw some big money at, at, at a free agent. 
Uh, mm-hmm. But I think this was great. Not necessarily what I expected, but I absolutely love the hall. I'm super excited to see uh, Fields to DJ Moore. You pair him with Chase Claypool. Hope that works out. Darnell yeah. Mooney's still in the mix. Your guy Cole Komet's still there. Um, remains to be seen if we're bringing uh, David Montgomery back. I don't know. Uh, Khalil Herbert has looked very good uh, in this offense as well. So it's a very it's a young core. You got a lot to be excited about, and adding a guy. Uh, and DJ Moore, who has over 5,000 receiving yards in his career, uh, like I just said, had a uh, career high in touchdowns last year. And l- let's not forget, he was in Carolina with never really an established quarterback. There were yeah. a lot of guys that uh, weren't necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily qualify them as great quarterbacks. I believe Justin Fields can get to that level uh, and showed flashes of greatness at certain points last year. And for to just add another weapon, uh, for him to, you know, get get the ball to, I think is going to help tremendously. I don't know if it completely fixes this offense overnight, obviously, because there's still stuff you have to address uh, with the offensive line. Uh, but it is definitely yeah. a good feeling to get a guy like that. I'm happy that Fields has his number one receiver now. I think the kid has all the potential in the world. Um, granted, Andy, you remember me trashing fields on your draft show a couple years back, but um, I stand corrected. He's played very, very well. Um, now, building off the offense, the Bears also got protection up front. The Bears signed guard Nate Davis to a three year, $30 million deal. This is a guy who started 54 games at right guard for the Tennessee Titans, 12 in 2022. And Andy, when I think of Nate Davis, This kid's just 26 years old. He has a 93.2 pass block win rate, which is the highest among Titans offensive linemen. Um, Again, Tennessee's offensive line has fallen apart. They had to cut Ben Jones. They lost Taylor Mm Lewan, Nate Davis to the Chicago Bears. Uh, What does Nate Davis bring in an offensive line where he'll likely be sandwiched in between uh, Lucas Patrick and Riley Reef? Right. I mean, you said it with the with the pass block rating, 92.7. Uh, again, I don't know if, how many Bears games you guys watched last year. They were not very good in pass protection. Um, and this adding a guy like this, I mean, he's played in 55 games in the NFL. 54 of those, like you said, are starts. This is a veteran. You're bringing in experience, but he's also, you know, 26. He is, his, he is very much uh, in the prime of his career. Um You could argue again, but I I mean, anytime you can bring in a guy like this um, at the price that they did, um, it's only good things. It's only good things. It's more experience for the younger guys uh, that are going to be lining up next to him. And it's just another guy that hopefully can keep people out of Justin Fields face and keep keep him out of harm's way. We know how many times that guy got sacked last year, an enormous amount. Again, that also does have to do with the fact that Fields can run and move a little bit. So a lot of the times he was uh, getting out of the pocket. Not all of those sacks were in the pocket, yes. But uh, again, I love it. I love it. You gotta. I'm excited to see what else they do on the offensive line. I because you talk about this number nine pick, a guy out of Northwestern and in, in Skaronski could absolutely help this offensive line and step in potentially day one as a starter. Um, so there's a lot of different things they could do. I'm sure they're not done in free agency, but as far as addressing the need for pass blocking, Ryan Poles did just that uh, with this move three years, $30 million uh, bringing Nate Davis over from Tennessee. I like the move a lot. And yes, Karonsky at nine, that could be in the cards, Andy, a, a Midwest guy. So mm-hmm. that could be in the cards. Um, next up, I want to talk about the defensive side of the ball. Again, you lost Roquan Smith to the Baltimore Ravens, and then you also traded away Robert Quinn this year. And in addition to that, um, to the Philadelphia Eagles, but reinforcements are on the way. Uh, pretty much the first signing of the day today um, again, nothing can be official until Wednesday when the league year officially begins. We're currently in the first day of the tampering period. But, um, Andy, the Bears opened up this tampering period with a boom. TJ Edwards, three years, $19.5 million. Only $12 million is guaranteed. 
Uh, the in the interior linebacker market is surprisingly low. I mean, this guy had 159 tackles last year. He was the fourth highest rated linebacker in the National Football League, ninth best in run defense, fifth in pass coverage. So he's good on both ends of it. Uh, 10th in overall coverage. So my question to you is this. What do you think of this signing, and what type of role does he have on the Chicago's defense? Ryan Poles is throwing bullets, man. This guy's good, dude. He led the you know he led the Eagles in tackles, and I mean that's a team that played in the Super Bowl. I love the move. Uh, again, yeah. I'm going to point back to if you watched any Bears games this season, there were not many bright spots at the linebacker position besides Jack Sanborn. Uh, undrafted free agent, also out of Wisconsin, like TJ Edwards. I, th- I mean, this guy has the potential to, you know, wear the green dot on his helmet. He might be the one calling the plays for this defense. He, I, I he's going to step in day one starter, leader of this defense. I'm super excited to see him and Edmonds next to each other because it's, again, you talked about Roquan Smith. I loved Roquan, unfortunate to end the way that it did. Um, but you know what? He's, he's not here anymore. You need somebody that can make plays at that position. And you just went out and got not one, but two guys, uh, and three years, 19 and a half million feels like a steal for a guy like this. Yeah, I, I think so too. Philly couldn't afford to keep him. And, um, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure, right? Um, TJ Edwards, far from trash elite this past season, but uh, before this season, he really wasn't well known. But Andy, I think there's a bigger guy we have to talk about, and this guy you pretty much put all your eggs into. This is the Kenny Galladay contract linebacker <laughs> style. Tremaine Edmonds, <laughs> four years, seventy-two million dollars. I had to throw that in there, Andy. Uh, but only fifty million guaranteed. It is the largest four-year contract for an inside linebacker in the NFL. Uh, Five years with the Bills, over 100 tackles in all five seasons. He's just 24 years old. He's six foot five with excellent downhill acceleration against the run. Um, Andy, you are one lucky man tonight. I'm buying his jersey tomorrow. (laughs) This guy's good. Uh, When I saw that notification pop up today, I jumped back like, what? Uh, Okay. We're getting a proven winner. He's played on some very good Buffalo Bills teams. Uh, This is a guy he can go sideline to sideline. He's not a liability in coverage. He can blitz effectively. He is going to be a monster. Him and Edwards in the middle of this defense are going to be the anchors. I'm super excited to watch this guy play. It's a lot of money. But like you said, he's still young. What he can bring to this team is an experience on a winning team, but still a, a similar to Davis, similar to Edwards, that they're still young enough that they can come to this new team and make an impact. They're veterans with experience, but uh, I'm just, I'm fucking giddy about it, dude. He, as long as he can stay healthy, um, I think we, they've got a really good chance, like at really taking a step forward defensively. I don't, again, I don't think these two moves completely fix the entire team. There's still some stuff you got to address. We got to go get an edge rusher. We have to, whether it's in free agency, whether it's in the draft, we need somebody that can make an impact to that position. But now, uh, if I'm a Bears fan, I feel really good about the linebacker spot. I'm feeling really good about the secondary um, with Gordon, uh, Tom, your favorite guy, Jaquan Brisker, and Eddie Jackson back there. I still, again, like there's so many ways the Bears could go at nine. Uh, it gets me really excited. You can go offensive line. You can go Witherspoon if it's there. You can go a guy mm-hmm. like Jackson Smith and Jigba. You could go for a guy like Bishon Robinson there as well. It's very open. Um, I'm I'm going to be on the draft show with you guys. I cannot wait um, to see what happens there. Um, but as far as Edmonds goes, ho- I'm hoping it's <laughs> – you said a Galladay like contract. Let's hope that he actually, you know, lives up to the hype and it is not just a complete waste of money. But um, I, I I think he's gonna, gonna be set up for success. I'm super excited to watch him play in Chicago. But what's different and all biased aside, I believe the Bears front loaded this contract. So because you have all the salary cap in the world this year. 
Mm-hmm. So the fact that you're able to financially front load this contract and have less of the cap hit in the proceeding years when the cap is only going to get higher is remarkable. Um, that's the last I have to say on Edmonds. But one, one other thing, Andy. Tyree Wilson at number nine out of Texas Tech, that edge rusher, if he's there, you might want to go after him. That might be a nice replacement. You can get on a cost control deal for four, maybe five years where sure. you won't have to pay him for a long time. So I'm excited right, so for you guys, man. I've heard the hype around that guy. I, I really need to like dive into some tape because uh, I've heard that he is on – kind of flying well he was kind of flying under the radar and has just shot up a bunch of draft sports yep. the, this last <laughs> few days speaking of shooting up draft boards I, I saw a report today that the panthers uh frank reich is in love with anthony richardson <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what they Don't do at do one it. we'll see what the bears do at nine but i uh, did ryan poles is a monster i love it I absolutely love the moves he's making so far. I'm excited to see uh, what kind of what he does. You know, it, who's to say he doesn't move back and, and move around uh, that pick number nine? He can very well move back up. He could very well move down again, depending on kind of what their draft board looks like. And I wouldn't be to be surprised to see him moving around some of the mid round picks as well. I mean, he did it a lot. Uh, in last year's draft. So he is not afraid to keep acquiring assets as he's trying to build out this team into what he really wants it to look like. And uh, again, again, after, after last season, you know, winning three games, the excitement of getting the number one overall pick and then turning it into what he did. And then uh, again, DJ Moore hasn't played any games in a bears uniform. So it remains to be seen what, what he's done. But you look back at what this guy's done, 880 yards receiving this year. Before that, three straight 1,000-plus yard receiving uh, uh, receiving years. Um, it's just exciting, dude. And then you add these just two dudes on defense, which you know, if you know anything about the Bears, it's, it's always been defense, defense, defense. They've relied uh, on some of those monsters of the midway for quite a long time. So Edmonds and Edwards are your new guys there. Go get an edge rusher. Uh, I probably need to go get some one more guy in the secondary, sure up yeah. that offensive line, and you feel really good about the Bears going into next season. I'm not saying they're going to come in and be world beaters and win the Super Bowl, um, but they have, you know, who knows what the NFC North is going to look like mm-hmm. um, next year. Um, so we'll see, but I'm, I'm fucking excited about it, Tom. I'll tell you that. Absolutely. And Matt Eberflus. Has some has some dogs on his defense now. He's got some guys that can move, that can tackle. Excited for you. Excited for your fan base. Um, excited for you to potentially get Devin Witherspoon. That would be awesome. I know you're yeah. an Illini fan. But, Andy, before I let you go, where can people find you and your work? So the Brew Party is making its return. I'm going to be doing some March Madness content. Uh, look for that drop in later this week. Um doing some picks and stuff like that for the first round, getting back into it. And then we'll get back into the swing of guests, uh, doing a little bit different format for the show. Uh, So look out for that coming soon. And then also you can find me on my other podcast. It's called edging the truth. So go to thebrewparty.com for any brew party stuff. We're at the brew party on Twitter uh, and Instagram uh, at the brew party podcast on Facebook. You can find that anywhere. Then edging the truth. It's a conspiracy theory podcast. I do with a couple buddies. Um, that's super fun that we drop weekly, uh, edging the truth.com for all that stuff. Tom, it's always a pleasure to get on the microphone with you. Um, I'm looking forward to having you back on the brew party when I get it back in the running. Um, cause we definitely have some stuff we have to talk about the draft show. Always a blast super ready for that. And then who, I mean, who we can't wait to get our, our good friend, Brian back in the fold here for, from the stands as well. So big things coming up, folks. Stay tuned. It's all game. Uh, Andy, appreciate you. Much love as always. Um, If you like conspiracy theories, Edging the Truth is the place to go. And for some reason, once again, if you want to continue to check us out here at Review and Preview Sports, you can um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Andy Hopper is the man. Uh, Appreciate you very much. On behalf of Andy Hopper, I'm Tom Scavetta, and this has been another uh, free agency episode of Review and Preview here on YouTube. Bear down, baby.